Welcome back to Persona Q Shadow of the Labyrinth. Now that all that prep is out of the way, it's time to head into the final labyrinth, the Clock Tower. But first, I've already set up my party off screen. I decided to use Zen because even though he's a little higher level than everyone else, he's technically a new party member, so we might as well use him. I just want to show his new voice clips. Chie is very behind everyone else as well, and I've used Yukari and Mitsuru because they're also a little behind, so here's the equipment that I've gone with on everyone. Chie has the new purple headband. You've still got that because plus 50 SP is really nice, and you will probably not be needing the Blazing Flame because I intend on giving you Black Frost. Speaking of which, let's set up Personas. Not Black Rider. Black Frost. Yukari I'm actually going to give Mother Harlot to. That's why I have the Vault Pin on Gary Stew. Just going to see if this works. Chair will obviously take a physical Persona. Could either use Kartakeya or, or Yamatsumi. Yeah, the links are a bit better if you're faster, so I might as well go with Oyamatsumi. And as for Gary Stu, I guess he'll take either Black Rider or Kartakeya. I kind of want to try out Kartakeya for a little bit, even though he's not the best with physical attacks. So, that should be everything we need to do. So, let's get ready to enter the Clock Tower. And we have a unique dungeon, en dungeon entrance here. So, one thing I'll say before we venture forth. The Clock Tower is the only dungeon in the entire game that only has one song. The music never changes throughout the whole thing. And it's also a very long dungeon. This, however, is not a problem because the Clock Tower song is one of the best songs in the entire game. And I'm going to go quiet for the first few minutes just to demonstrate that. Talk about the stronghold of a real enemy. Doesn't look like it'll be an easy nut to crack. Yeah, it seems like there's an awful lot of floors. Just stay calm and be careful drawing your map as you go. It's probably safe to assume that the shadows are more powerful here. Can you handle it, Zen? It won't be a problem. I've gained the abilities Ray had been using until now. I'll cause no trouble. Huh? Don't tell me that's because of the power of love. It would be more accurate to say I've regained them. Ray's battle abilities were originally my powers. I already went over this earlier. She had the power to fight because I was with her. Which means I was forcing her to fight. I've regained my memories as well as the power I lent her. I'll be able to fill Ray's role from now on. I'll make sure not to drag you down. So... Just remember to not push yourself too hard. There's no shame in relying on one's companions. Yes, I understand. Thank you. That is a really cool looking door. You might notice that it says 1% explored even though we've only stepped on one tile. The clock tower is a little unique as far as dungeons go. We've come full circle, just like you in Wonderland. There seems to be something up ahead. Why don't we investigate? Oh. Clocks represent shortcuts. <sighs> so we can't operate this thing yet. <sighs> Let's go. There's a power spot up ahead. Why don't we take a look at it? Twenty percent explored already? Yeah, something's going on here. There might be something around here. Do you want to investigate? Mm -hmm. 
Okay, kind of an unregistered side quest. Just like the plant thing back in You in Wonderland. Yep, the song's not repeating yet. How dare you interrupt this music, Shadows! Oh boy. Of course, the first thing to show up here would be the arcane turret. This enemy sticks in my mind immensely. I have kind of recurring nightmares of this thing. Not literally, but I might as well have, because this thing is really brutal. The arcane turret is weak to fire, it resists a lot of other things, but the main annoying thing about the arcane turret is that it has an attack called Charge Shot that inflicts massive pierce damage and penetrates the back row. They can also power charge that. Oh, I do not like these things at all. They are incredibly brutal to have to deal with. I would kind of like to knock them down as quickly as possible. I might even try and, uh, deep, and try and buff defense here, maybe. Uh, let's see. I suppose I can go for a Dragon Cry on Shie. Uh, Yukari can... Hmm. How about set up Mataru Kaja and Mitsuru will go for an Argidine immediately. Okay, I'm a little worried about this. Here goes. And yep, Zen gets a solo cut in as well. There's Flame Link going. Not amazing damage, but it all adds up. Oh, that's not even with a skill. I should mention that a huge number of the early enemies in the tower have conditional drops. This one does too. The Arcane Turret's conditional drop is the Turret Belt, which requires you to defeat it with darkness. Yeah, they encourage you to defeat these things with instant death. They're that bad. Okay, right. I suppose I can go for... Flame Link didn't really do a lot of damage here. Guess I can go for a Hientor. You can Fire Spray again. Chie is in Dragon Cry, so she can go straight for... Uh, probably not Myriad Arrows. Maybe, um... Brain Shake's not a bad idea. I'd like to pull one of these out of commission temporarily. And Mitsuru can continue to use her Fire Attack. Nice damage there. Here goes. Not really sure why I haven't used Chie that much. Persona. And I snap that thing out of sleep pretty much immediately, but I did some pretty good damage. Come, let's try it. Okay, one's dead. And thankfully you didn't hit Gary through there. I am really, really liking Healing Hand. That was a really good investment. As I said before, I didn't really consider that skill very much in my first playthrough. And that was a pretty good shot. The true enemy is oneself. <laughs> Just kidding. No conditional drops, though. Let's go. And we're already meeting the FOE of this labyrinth. The FOEs in this labyrinth are bigger and eight. Why is everything bigger and eight? Oh, it is because they are spiders now. <sighs> That's another trollfic reference in this case. That fanfiction is deliberately terrible, but anyway. <laughs> yeah, they're going all out with the spider symbolism here. I suppose I'll talk about that maybe later. Now I'll just talk about. That's an FOE over there, right? We should be careful. Well, we've got an easy preemptive strike on it, but uh, these things are pretty dangerous. Let's not do that. This thing is the Watcher. The Watcher moves. Uh, I. Yeah, oh, that's why I can't move back. The There's a 100% map chest behind me. Yeah, this floor is very suspiciously small. But yes, every time you take a step, the spider will jump. It moves in a set pattern, always jumping to specific squares. This one is just going in a rectangle shape, it seems. 
I should mention that thanks to Debilitate, we are probably able to kill this thing now. I'm still not going to do that. Yeah, see here, we've got to be careful because we take one step. It's already poised to attack us. If you are anywhere uh, in the middle of its jump path, it will get you. So, let's keep moving. So, like, for example, if I take one step forward, it'll get me... Uh, and another encounter. Three powerful enemies. I'm missing data about them. I won't hold back. We have the Mind Dice. The Mind Dice is weak to Dark, but it has a conditional drop as well. Uh, you know, if it's defeated with Fire, you get the Fire Ring Lump. I don't think I have any Dark attacks on this group, which is unfortunate. Because these things resist pretty much everything else. I guess I could go for a Decay Circle. X Slice, uh, you will go for Dragon Cry yet again. Yes, Yukari can set that up, and then maybe she can try and poison them. Or I can just go for Tentarafu here. What the? Only one of the bound. And yep, there's Solo Zen again. He still has Platinum Coin. Oh, yeah, I bought a few of those for the Festival Dudes and the other FOEs. And I'm running through them now. I'm liking having easy access to Mataru Kaja on, on uh, my sub-personas. I would appreciate a little bit more impure reach though, I haven't been passing down on in a while. Leader, please wake up. You're defenseless. Yeah, unfortunately we're not going to be seeing, and I don't want to do that, we're not really going to be seeing... Oh yeah, this is a piercing attack. We're not going to be hearing the main characters... I guess I can hear it arrow since a couple of them are panicked. Uh, the main character's sleep line, uh, unless we're on the P4 route. Yes, we can see what Garudine does. I think Mitsuru's weapon still has a chance of instant death, so let's go with that. Now let's hope most of these don't end up hitting the back one. Yeah, I think all of the modifiers really add up when it comes to criticals. That's probably why when you get a critical uh, while under the effects of multiple buffs like Power Charge, Dragon Cry, Mataru Kaja, criticals do massively more damage than regular attacks. I don't think I've seen the instant death trigger with Mitsuru's weapon before. Yeah, I should mention that if you pay close attention to the bottom screen, you'll notice that the spider jumps every turn. So if you're in a direct line with it at any point, you are it is going to jump in on the battle. So you want to make sure that you never get into encounters, or if you do get into, into an encounter uh, when you're in a direct line with it, you run from the encounter quickly. I guess I can go for another Myriad Arrows. You can just... Uh, I'm not really sure what you'll do. I guess I can try and panic the one in the rear. Because it's going to explode, and, uh, yeah, given how much the explosion hurt with the previous dice we fought, also Gary's too being asleep is bad, because he'll take enormous damage from the explosion. Mm. Yep, there's the self-destruct. Wow, that did way less damage than I thought, and I forgot that it actually damages the other enemies in the fight. The enemy was strong too. Okay, we're slowly approaching level 55 with everyone. I'm gonna try and get that at some point in the dungeon. Oh yeah, see, see here, don't take a step forward. I'm missing a tile. Yep, gotta get that floor completion. But that puts us in a good position to escape from the spider here. I think there's something over there. Let's go take a look. Yeah, these FOEs are very, very dangerous, by the way. They have uh, multi-targeting instant death spells, they have vines, they have just about anything that can make an enemy brutal to fight. Three powerful Another new enemy, Yoden of Power. Prepare to be executed. The Yoden of Power is weak to ice, so yes, it is going to prepare to be executed. Doesn't have a conditional drop, though. So, let's see what we can do here. Do you have, uh, you have every link except Ice Link? Because, of course, 
However, in the rear, we have some of those things. I'm going to set up a Decay Circle. If you can uh, bind their physical attacks, that will really, really help. And you're going to go straight for Dragon Cry, and Yukari will... I don't want to Salome's Kiss one of the tanks, but no, let's Mataru Kaja, and let's go for... I can either go for Icy Paradise or Tentara. I'll go for Icy Paradise for now, because I might be Strength Binding some of them. And we didn't get the Strength Bind. Here goes. <laughs> primal Force! Yeah! Enemies on the first floor, and they're already using Primal Force. I don't think Primal Force in this game is as strong as it is in Persona 3 or 4, but it's still a pretty dangerous attack. Now, uh, knowing my luck, this is gonna... Actually, no, it did hit the Yoten, that's good. Only hit the Yoten once, though. Leave it to me. Kung Fu noises! Whoa, whoa. Okay, it's taking quite a bit of damage, but the ones in the rear are what I'm really afraid of. I guess I can try and key into one of them, even though it won't be doing a lot of damage, thanks to uh, them being in the rear row. I'm really liking Brain Shake so far, let's just go for another Brain Shake. I suppose I can go for Poison Breath. Poison Breath is fairly cheap to use. Here we go. Some people wondered why I'm using this without Impure Reach, but it's kind of decent sometimes. Okay, now I'm in the front row. Which means my uh, Hiento is going to be doing more damage. Unfortunately, that means my Icy Paradise is going to do less damage and not give you boost. I'm counting on you, Messiah. Okay, good. Knock one of them down. There's Charge Shot! As you can see, that skill is very powerful. I really, really don't like that skill. It dodged. Let me at him. One shot, one kill. Well, hope you back those words up. You did, nice. Unfortunately, we're still very heavily damaged. Someone please heal him. Yikes! You all right, leader? Uh, let's. I guess I could actually go straight for Renewal Aura here. Unfortunately, it won't give me enough uh, HP to use a uh, physical attack. Yeah, Brain Shake is pretty nice. I'm seeing why speedruns rely on it a lot. Unfortunately, I don't really want to use much of it soon here. I know I mispronounced that Persona's name when I first got it. It's um, Srausha, I think. The R is the second letter, not the um, first letter. The stronger the enemy, the more you learn. Yeah, lots of experience from that. that. That was pretty great. Probably because the enemies here are a bit higher level than what we're uh, used to. I think you are expected to grind a little bit before this dungeon. I think we can manage it without another major grind session. Though I might end up grinding midway through the dungeon if uh, I don't hit level 55 by then. Because I do want to show off the party member's ultimate personas as much as I possibly can. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry, everyone. I'm sorry, Zen. This is all because I was selfish. It's starting to become a lot like the Persona 4 dungeons, where we're hearing the thought of the victim as we go through. Rachel, she's suffering. The meaning of life. Who would have that answer? Why does one need a reason? They're living now and existing here. That is life. It doesn't matter if there is meaning behind it or not. Hmm. Maybe not, but... That's what I thought. Until I met Ray. Now I don't know anymore. It's not a matter of whether the meaning exists or not. The search for meaning is universal regardless. The search for meaning? You seek some justification for your existence? You're already alive. You don't need any justification for that. That's not what living's about. We're not talking about the natural order like a heartbeat. Akihiko. The word living would always give me an image of myself standing alone, no matter how hurt I might be. But lately, I've started thinking about it in a different way. The reason why I'm alive here and okay with myself is because I had everyone with me. Everyone? 
My parents, my teachers, Shinji, Mitsuru, my companions and friends, my sister, who's passed. Without any one of those people, I wouldn't be who I am now. In other words, the person I call me was created by all those other people. That's why when I think about living, I want to imagine tons of people around me. My life isn't just my own. I'm not alone. Not alone? Don't worry, I'm here with you. You're not alone. Not alone. We're getting into some pretty heavy philosophical concepts here, but we are in the final dungeon of a Persona game, that's to be expected. As you can see, there are yet more spiders uh, approaching. Let's go, Mitsuru Senpai. Absolutely. Oh, that's cool. Do they only say that after that moment in the fourth dungeon? It'd be pretty cool if that was true. Anyway, Rampage Drive. This thing will give anyone who played Persona 3 horrible flashbacks. Yeah, this was a pretty tough early game boss in that one. But the Rampage Drive uh, here is weak to wind, and it also has a conditional drop, in this case the H Drive gear, which requires you to defeat it with lights. I don't have any light use on this team though, so that won't be happening. I kind of want to get rid of the tank first. But I think I can go for Cyclone here first. Uh, let's go for Dragon Cry. Uh, Yukari will... Hmm, I, I like this Mataru Kaja setup, and Mitsuru, I think I'll actually have her attempt to panic everything. Come, let's try it. Here it goes. I guess I can just say one thing now that we're in the final dungeon, although we're going to be here for a while. This is a very, very long dungeon. Like all the dungeons in this game, but uh, this one even more so. Leave it to me. But uh, a while back, I listened to the Dancing uh, dancing in the Moonlight remix of Light the Fire Up in the Night, which is really great, by the way. And part of me wanted to do some editing magic to replace the battle theme in this dungeon, this like, in Someone all battles, with that song. How's your health? We can't afford for our leader to fall. But... In practice, I don't think that's, that would really, you know, be practical to do. It would require me to... No, I like to switch off the battle music every time the encounter meter was red, and otherwise I have to mute the video, and thus we wouldn't get any voice clips during battle, and yeah, that, that would probably be too much effort. But anyway, it was, an, it was, an, it was a thought that I had at least. I guess you can Garudine one of them. Mitsuru can... I guess you can Akidine that thing. Because its charge shots are not going to be any less dangerous even from the back row. I used the wrong move! I was supposed to use uh, Life Goblet, when instead I used Guiding Sword. Hopefully that doesn't come back to bite me. At least that thing is going for... Yeah, it can sometimes attack twice per turn as well. Well, at least Yukari is boosted, which means she can uh, get a free... Um, she can freely use uh, Mediarama first next turn. Okay, so I guess Zen is free to do something else this turn. He can just go from the Cyclone on the front row. Chie, thankfully, has just enough to use Brain Shake again. And you are going to go for Mediarama. You're going to go for Abidine. Here we go! Wow, really nice damage there. Keep saying this, but I should have been using Brain Shake more often earlier. I don't think Persona 4 has anything like Brain Shake. I know it has a skill like Mustard Bomb that's a physical attack that has a chance of, I think it's Innovation. There are a lot of physical status attacks in that game. Ow. Don't hit GA again, please. And you did. Because so Blade of Fury. Well, I guess I can use Recalm. 
and Cyclone again. I'm not going to go for Garudine with you, because unfortunately that would really blow out your SP, and we're still not quite done with this floor yet, as you can probably tell. Uh, actually, let's just go for Megado. I like how they both started slumping at the same time. Actually, please don't kill them this turn, because then, oh, oh my Blade of Fury again. What? I'm counting on you, Messiah. At least I was able to get Rakam in. Hit it. Panic. Nope. Zenkun's health is low. <clears throat> badly wounded. So yeah, obviously that's a new a new quote. Uh, should I get a circle? Hmm. They're both really, really low on health. And Chie is not under Dragon Cry anymore, so she's going to be going last. Which is a pain. Poison Breath, I guess. Actually, hang on a minute. Maybe I should use the medical kit with someone. Just in case. These things are bizarrely fast. Well, probably not bizarrely. They are actually quite fast. And nice. Uh, that means they don't waste the medical kit. The enemy was strong too. Yeah, the enemies are giving us a good experience. Even stronger? I don't care about life aid. Let's keep training. I don't care about revenge blow. I do care about healing myself though. And we have another dead end. <sighs> yes, ah. there will be a puzzle gimmick later on. Woo! <laughs> ah, jeez. I'm actually not sure about that baseball tradition, but then it's again, I don't really know time. that much about baseball. It seems to be mostly a well-known sport in Japan and America, and not so much everywhere else. Huh. Australia has cricket, rugby, and AFL as a sport it tends to focus on more. Da, 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 da. And we get a side quest out of that. Also, I kind of talked over Junpei character development, which is a little annoying. Speaking of character development, you might have noticed in that previous voice cutscene, Akihiko bizarrely returns to his non-Flanderized self. <gasps> is it filet mignon? Speaking of Flanderization, <laughs> I still don't think Chie's Flanderization is that bad, but Three enemies. I kind of see that. Powerful. We meet again, Ghost Ring. <laughs> that was dangerous. I'm glad everyone is safe. I've succeeded in bettering myself. And so Hex Slice upgrades to Soul Slice. Unfortunately, we have to wait until level 63 for King card, which... Well, that means his elemental attack's gonna be pretty bad for most of this dungeon. If I remember correctly, yes, this treasure box is special. Copper. Yep, Elizabeth's up to her old tricks again. <sighs> She wants some way to relieve her boredom, so I'm gonna make a note here. Copper. And let's go. Not a lot left to this floor. Let's get going. That's an FOE over there, right? We should be careful. But there are more spiders. Hi, spiders. Uh, also, yeah, I can't do anything. I have to go back through the door. Forward. I probably should have been marking them out in separate colors. Guess I can go here. These rooms can be a little awkward to explore just because of the spiders, and this is a dead end. Speaking of which, yeah, I can't go anywhere now, so I'm gonna have to use a Gova K more. Getting a lot of use out of that item. Kind of surprised they gave it to you on only the first floor of the end of the Pride exhibit. Okay, let's continue with Operation Avoid the Spiders. Had a feeling you'd be going there. 
Okay, that is a bit of a problem. But I can escape here. But I am trapped again! Ugh, double charge shot. Yeah, that's the thing that I really hate about these enemies. Mitsuru Senpai is unconscious! Mitsuru Senpai, are you okay? There are shadows like that here. Yikes! Let's go. That's an FOE over there, right? We should be careful. Yeah, they really make sure that you're strategic regarding these FOE's movements here. So I can't go up now. And uh, now I have to go here. I'm gonna go down. Yeah, you sort of have to plan ahead. Am I gonna get trapped again? No, I can go there. down here. Well, there's space there. There's something about that ball. And we should Can be we mostly through. I don't think I think there are some yeah there are definitely some spaces up there I haven't stepped on yet. But there are the stairs. Must step on all tiles. A treasure box. Kaiser armor. Okay then let's see how good that is. It's worse than the Dragon Scale, but it increases SP. And it is gender neutral, so that'll be pretty good for Yukari. 98% and 98%. There we go! You all know this floor perfectly well by now. So, as you can probably tell, the gimmick of the Clock Tower is lots of floors, but each individual floor is very small. I feel like that's a nice change of pace given how enormous the floors were towards the end of the end of a Pride exhibit. So it gives you some time to kind of catch your breath and just sort of get your bearings after all that. Let's go. Like I said, I like it. Yeah. It also means lots of 100% map completion chests to obtain. For this one we get Scratched Lens, which is yet another item that unlocks something to buy at Theodore's rather than gives us a new uh, item outright. Hi there, Spiderses. I see you. I see what your brethren tried to do to me. Oh. I should mention you might want to buy some Vanish Balls going into this place because getting caught this by a spider is... is very bad. They're not quite Festival Dudes levels of you pretty much instantly die, but they can kill you very easily. So I believe this is for the Scratch Lens. And with that we can buy Analysis Scope. Oh, we can also see that uh, we'll soon have access to these items, which are slightly stronger uh, damaging elemental items. Analysis Scope. Now, when I first saw the name, I thought this would be just instantly fills out the enemy's analysis info, which wouldn't be that useful this late into the game, but instead, this item guarantees that you get any item drop from that shadow if you use it on them. So that is pretty cool. I was about to say good for guaranteeing drops from FOEs, but I'm pretty sure FOEs are always guaranteed to drop their material. Drop rates are so high in this game, I find, that it's not really all that necessary of an item, but it can be nice to have if you're farming for a particular thing. It's just a shame that you can't access it until this late in the game. But anyway, it seems a bit weird to end it here when we only explored one very small floor, but we did have a couple of major cutscenes and we got introduced to a lot of enemies. Next time I'll be heading to the clock tower second floor, where we'll meet one of the strongest FOEs in the game, and one that some of you watching might be familiar with already.
See you then.